Ta -da -ta -ta -da -ta -ta -ta. Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we are going to talk about something that is very interesting. Um, that's about finding the largest or the longest palindrome substring of a, a string. <laughs> so basically, if you have like a string like this, uh, you'll basically be wanting to find the longest palindromic substring of this. So in this case, this is K L O L L O L. K. This is the largest palindromic substring in, in the case of this string. So if you haven't recognized the palindromic substring basically means that if you read the string from left to right or right to left, it's basically the same thing. And that's what we are going to find, how to do it programmatically, how to find that particular uh, value. So um, so the first thing is, uh, let's, let, let's take a look at what the, the logic of this particular uh, program is going to be. Now, before that, I want to tell you that there are three methods to actually get this particular output. And that is, the first method is to uh, understand brute force, how to do it with brute force. The next method is dynamic programming. And the third method is the Manneker's algorithm. So uh, we will be using all three um, and in, in this video, we'll be using the brute force method. So for the brute force method, the logic is simple. If you have, let's say, A, B, A, what you do is you basically get a substring that resembles this. So the substrings which you will have from this will be A, A, B, A, uh, B, A. Then you have B, A, and B, and then you have A. So these are... Uh, yeah, all of some of these might be repeated, but yeah, this is basically how the substrings are basically going to be formed. So if you can imagine the amount of substrings that will be created because of this particular value over here will be ginormous. And that's what this program basically does. So um, once you get the substrings, let's say you get A, B, A, you get A, A, B, B, and B, A, and these are your substrings and A, B, A. These are your substrings. So basically what happens is uh, your substrings will be checked by reversing them. So if you reverse this, you get A. If you reverse this, you get B, A. If you reverse this, you get B. If you reverse this, you get A, B. And if you reverse this, you get A, B, A. So the biggest palindromic substring is A, B, A because it's, uh, it's length 3 plus it has, uh, you know, it's pretty big. Plus it's a palindrome. So that's how the palindromic substring or this algorithm will basically be working. You'll get all the substrings, and once you get all the substrings, you'll reverse them and check whether they are equal or not. So first, the first uh, function which we'll be talking about is the get reverse string function. So this function over here, basically, what it does is, is it takes in a character, a character array, which in this case is a string. It takes in a string and basically uses that string to get the reverse of that string. So yeah, so what you're gonna do is the first thing is you're gonna say int length is equal to strlenc. So strlen is a function uh, which is built into the system which gives you the length of a particular of a particular variable. It, it gives you the length of a particular string. Then you have int temp which is equal to length. So this is a temporary variable which we have defined or declared to basically store the value of length because because I don't want to use the length directly in any of these particular places. So here, I, I don't want to set length minus minus because then the value of length will change. I don't want the value of length to change. I want the value of length to remain the same. That's why I declare temp, which would basically be a proxy for storing the value of length, which will help me later on in the program. So, so what happens here? I say int length equal to S your L E N C because I want to know the length of the string which I'm going to reverse. Then I, I've stored a proxy of temp. Then what I did is I said car star str is equal to new car length. So I'm creating an array of characters and storing it in a new memory location. So that's basically it. I'm I'm taking I'm basically taking uh, a new memory location, new, and I'm making an array to store my characters. Now, why do you think I just don't say car star str and then just 
open close brackets and stuff like that because because I want to create a completely new memory location. I don't want it to be dependent on the previous and, and I don't want to be dependent on the C++ compiler to give me a memory location. I want to create my own and that's why I use a new over here. Now, what is the logic that I'm going to use if I want to reverse ABA? The logic that I'm going to use is my new STR is basically empty, right? It's empty and it has the same length as ABA because I'm using the same length over here. So to reverse it, I'm going to use two pointers. P1 is my first pointer and P2 is my second pointer. P1, I want it to point to STR. And STR basically contains the address of the first element of the array. And P2, I want to point to STR LENC, the length, the length minus one. So length minus one will be basically this element over here. And that address, ampersand gives us the address. So P2, is now pointing to this over here. So what I'm doing is while temp minus minus while the length so temp in this case in this case will be three. So while three minus minus which will basically give me a three a two and a one. So this will be executing three times. I'm going to say p1 plus plus um, the dereference the p1 first dereferencing p1 gives me this value over here and uh, p2 minus p2 dereferenced will give me uh, this over here a so a will be here then you have b which will come here and then you have this a which will come here so this will give you a b a which is the reverse of this which is the same thing but it doesn't matter that's just an example so you got the reverse of it and then you're going to say star p1 is equal to slash zero slash zero backslash zero is basically a terminating character which is used in c plus plus to basically denote the termination of a string. So this will basically f be followed by this. Now this is not included in str len, but only this much is. So this will give you the entire string, which is reversed and that you can return back to where you called the function from. That's basically the explanation of this. It's pretty simple, very straightforward, and not that difficult to understand. The next function that we're gonna talk about is get sub string. The get substring function is pretty is, is a very interesting is a very interesting function. So what I'm going to do is, what this function does is suppose you have a string, a b c d e and f. So what this function does is it takes the string. So I passed in this string, let's say, and I passed in the values of two comma four. So what it's going to do, what it's going to give me is, it's going to give me let's just say one two, three four and five. It's going to give me this. To this it's going to give me the value c d and e that's the substring which will give me so just imagine if you have 0 comma 0 0 comma 1 0 comma 2 0 comma 3 then 1 comma 3 1 comma 2 if you have all these values 0 comma 0 will give me a 0 comma 1 will give me a b 0 comma 2 will give me a b c 0 comma 3 will give me a b c d 1 comma 3 will give me b c d and 1 comma 2 will give me b and c so, so th that's what the substring function will do. It will give me a substring with the particular, you know, indexes which I want to choose from. So that's what the substring function will do. So let's see how it works. The way the substring function works is the first thing is the length. Now, what is the length? The length will be the ending, ending minus the starting plus one. Now, why plus one? So let's see, ending minus starting, right? So here, let's take an example of two comma four. What is the ending? Four. What is the starting? Two plus one. Now, if you say four, four minus two, that's two, but this is not two. If you see, this is three. So that's why I need to add plus one. Sorry, not seven, one, which will give me a value of three. That's why it's ending minus starting plus one, which will give me that value. Then the same thing, the same uh, strategy which we, which, which we applied over here is applied over here. That is, uh, the, there's a proxy for storing the length. And that's what I do. Length in temp is equal to length. Then there's something interesting. If length is greater than strlen or c then return null now what what does this this mean this basically means that if i pass something like 0 comma 17 if i pass something like 0 comma 17 if I pass something like 0 comma 17 then then this won't work because 0 1 2 3 4 5 there is no 17 so if you pass 0 comma 17 it's it can't work because there is no such length of variable. Now, there's one more thing which you would like to do is check if starting uh, should be less than uh, the length. 
and ending should also be less than length and greater than zero. So those functions, those also you can put in if you want to, but I didn't do it because it was just, this is just an example. It's not like a production level code, so it's okay. So the next thing that you do is car star str equal to new car length plus one. Now you might be wondering why is there length plus one? Why? I mean, what's the reason for length plus one? And if you see, we have done star p1 equal to this over here again. And that's why we did this length plus one because we want to accommodate this particular value. Um, yeah, so what, 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 what do you do? How do you actually trigger it? So you say car star p is equal to str as we did initially. Let's take an example again, a, b, c, d, e, and f. And then you have uh, two comma four, right? So that's three, one, two, and three. So you have pointers, which are now pointing to this star p1 equal to str. And then, then you have a pointer, which is saying ampersand c is starting. So c of starting, what is c of starting? c of starting, starting is two. And so c of two is equal to this one over here, c. So it's pointing to c. So what it does is dereference the value of str, which is this one over here, and give it the value of dereference the pointer p2, so which is c. And then you do plus, 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 pointer moves here, pointer moves here, d, pointer moves here, pointer moves here, e, c, d, e. And that's how you get, and then you have this slash zero at the end, and then you return it. That's how you get this particular substring. It's pretty simple. It's not very complicated. Pretty, pretty simple. So that's what I printed over here and here. Pretty simple. Next is I'm creating a palindrome string. Now, when I create the palindrome, when I get the palindrome at the end, I need to store the palindrome somewhere, right? I need to store it somewhere. So in order to store it somewhere, I'm going to declare a palindrome string and say new car str len str. And so yeah, the length of the current str because the palindrome, the buffer which I want to create is of that size. I, 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 the palindrome is either the same size or a size less than that. It doesn't matter. So yeah. And then I'm going to say palindrome length is equal to zero because there is no palindrome which exists right now. So the length is going to be, of course, zero. Next, I'm going to create two for loops. One is the for loop for i and a for loop for j. So these will, th this will basically give me values like 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, dot, 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 0, 15 or 14. Then I have a 1, 0. Uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, dot, 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 and this will be up till 14 and then 14, 14. So if you think about that, this will basically give me those values. And these values each are substrings. These are substrings, which I will be using over here. So if I say car star sub str equal to get substring str, the substring, which is this one over here, JK, LOL, LOL, K, I, D, D, I, N, G. And that I'm basically saying I comma J. So get the substring 0 comma 0, get the substring 0 comma 1, get the substring 0 comma 2, blah, 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 blah. Those are the substrings which we will be getting access to. Then I'm going to say if strcmp substring is equal to equal to null, if those values which we got are null, if they are null, then we will not be doing anything further. Because if you see, when we get null, your length does not make sense. And that's what we're doing exactly over here, null. So once you get a null, well, what you do is you say that my rev substring and, and reverse that substring which you get. So if you get a substring like CDE, you're going to store the reverse of that in rev substring, E, D, C. And that's what you store in there. Um, so also one more thing is strcmp. If, if these two values are same, strcmp will give you a zero and if they're not, it will give you a non-zero. So, so right now we don't want them to be zero because if they're equal, then there's no point in, in going into this function. We don't want them to be equal. So if they're not equal, this is how you go about it. Now you got a rev substring. Now, once you get a reverse substring, you want to check, hey, it, it's, it's a reverse and you want to equate it with the actual substring, which you have. And if the reverse substring and the actual substring, or oh, sorry, the actual substring and the reverse substring are the same thing this value will be zero. And then you have an exclamatory mark to make it one, which means it becomes true. If they are the same, it means that you found a palindrome. And when, and when you find a palindrome, you want to check the length of that palindrome. If str len, the length of that substring is greater than the length of the palindrome. Okay. If the length of the substring is greater than the length of the palindrome, it means that your palindrome is a-okay and you can actually use it. Okay. You can actually use it, which means because initially the palindrome length is zero. And then if you say one letter, even a is a palindrome. So your palindrome length will become one 
and then when you get a bigger palindrome, your str, uh, your, your current palindrome will be in F, uh, sub str, and that should be greater than the existing palindrome. And if it is, it means that you found a bigger palindrome than you already had, and that, that's why you will be running this code: palindrome string equal to sub str, and palindrome length equal to str len sub str. And once you find this, you are done, and you can go ahead and happily print out your answer. So if you go over here and you run this program correctly. K L O L L O L K. And that's how the brute force method for the palindrome actually actually works. Uh, so thanks for watching guys. This was a pretty long video. I, I hope you did not get bored and understood everything that was needed to be understood. So the code will be in the description. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next video.